Then let's review the arteries that are above or anterior to the diaphragm. And the list I'm using looks like this from the front. It says vessels anterior to or above the diaphragm for the lab list of spring 2021. We've done the veins in another video. Let's do the arteries. So the arteries you can see here, and from here we'll be going from the heart out because that's the direction of travel for the arteries. We begin with the ascending aorta. That becomes the aortic arch, and that's connected to the pulmonary trunk, uh, that uh, most anterior portion of the heart that you can see when you look directly at the heart, what we call the nose on the heart, if you will, by the ductus arteriosus in the fetal circulation. So it's a little bit confusing when you look at the fetal pig. You'll want to identify this as the aorta, and it's not. Notice that the aorta is behind it. So this is the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary vein that turns into the left and right pulmonary arteries, if you remember that when we did that in lab. We could put our fingers on those. Yep. So behind the pulmonary trunk is the aorta, and so we've got the ascending, the aortic arch, and then the descending going down the back. Remember, this could be considered the thoracic aorta. And there's the ligamentum arteriosus. I'm sorry, there's the ductus arteriosus in, in uh, this is an adult heart I'm looking at, so it's the ligamentum. But this is where the connection would be between the fetal uh, pulmonary trunk and the fetal aorta. All right, so remember that this is not the aorta. <laughs> When you're looking at the pig, it will look like it, but just go behind this and you'll see the aorta, right? And I'll show you how to pick out the parts of the aorta in just a moment. We've got the aorta uh, going up, which is the ascending, then there's the aortic arch. And we've got the descending or thoracic aorta, and then we're going to have some branches off of the aorta at the top. And I'm referring to these here. Now in a fetal pig, we can position that. In a fetal pig, uh, you'll only see two branches, so this middle one will be gone. So let's talk about the names of these pipes coming off of the top of this aortic arch. We've got a left subclavian artery, a left subclavian artery. That will have a left axillary and a left brachial artery branch, right? So we'll have a left subclavian with a left axillary and a left brachial. And then we'll have a brachiocephalic artery or trunk. And I'm going to emphasize that word again, trunk, because it's important that you associate the word trunk with some branches. The brachiocephalic trunk in pigs um, covers both of the carotids, so it will cover the left common carotid. Here we don't have the word common in here, but you can say the common carotid uh, or just the left carotid uh, in, in this particular video. So the left carotid artery and the right carotid artery. These are both the common carotids. And then we'll have the axillary artery and the brachial. You may note some definite comparisons you can make between the veins and the arteries here. They both have brachial and they both have axillary branches. So you remember there was a brachial vein and an axillary vein on both arms in the fetal pig in the last video. And that's true during this uh, section of the arteries. The difference will be where the common carotid runs with the internal jugular you saw on the last video. Now we'll see the carotid arteries. Okay. Let's look at this model of the human with those words that we have. Because we're taking a human anatomy class, uh, we want to be aware that the human heart, the aorta, has three, uh, three pipes, if you will, coming off the uh, aortic arch. So there's three vessels that exit. The fetal pig only has two coming off of the aortic arch. In the human, if you'll consider that this person would be uh, facing you, and so that this side would be the left side. Let me just draw this. It might be a little easier. Normally, I would be showing you this in class, using myself as the model. 
All right. On the human aorta, I'm going to draw that really big, and then these two smaller. Okay, so this would be the left side. This would be the right side. And remember that the heart is slightly to the left. Okay, so I've drawn it slightly to the left on this piece of paper. Not very much, but a little bit. Think about the arm. I'm going to just draw a hand here. Here's a hand. Here's a head with some ears. All right. If I want to get, and here's the other hand. Let's see. I have to take some lessons on hand drawing, won't I? All right. So let's say, here's the heart. And we know that this came from the left ventricle and it went out through the aortic semilunar valve. All right. So we're blood and we're going up and out and we want to go, let's take this first branch. Let's go over here first. We can just go on out to the left arm because I'm pointing at it with that particular vessel right there. So this is called, do you remember on the veins where we did the subclavian and then the axillary, the brachial, and then the median cubital? This is called the left subclavian artery in humans because it's the first branch and it goes underneath the clavicle and then just goes out to the arm or we'll say to the hand all right because we're going to go all the way down to the fingers the next branch that you see off of the aorta is pretty much right underneath the left cervical area the left of the throat here so if this is the person and this is the midline i could go straight up to the brain from here on the left side that makes sense because I'm just underneath it. Remember, the heart is a little bit to the left, so all of this structure is already over here. I've got the left common carotid, which is what this is. Because I'm already over there, right? Well, not right, but left. I'm already on the left side because the heart is over to the left, so it's easy to go to the left arm and then go to the left uh, side of the brain through the carotid and all of its branches. Now the problem is here. I'm over on the left side of the body and I need to get over to the right side to deliver the arm and this left carotid. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the right carotid. So I need to get over to here to do that. And so I'm going to take a larger branch. I like to think of it as a highway. And I'm going to go under the or across the sternum underneath it and then step over to the right side. The way I'm gonna get there is with this big trunk. And this trunk has the same name as it did in the veins. It's called the brachiocephalic trunk. Or you could call it the brachiocephalic artery, to be clear. But do remember that it's a trunk, so it's going to split. And remember that brachio means arm and cephalod means head. And so if I'm in this big trunk, then I can divide and go straight up as the right common carotid. Because now I've used that trunk to get over to the right side of the body. And then I can also branch off and go to the right arm. And this one, if this is the left subclavian, this is the right subclavian. Okay. So think of a brachiocephalic trunk, a BCT, as a way to get over to wherever you've got to go. These guys, the left common carotid and left subclavian, they're already on the left side because that's where the heart is. But now we need to cross over and get over to the right side. So this is the human obviously, because there's hands on the fetal pig. A little bit different. And we're going to draw that, or I'm going to show you on a picture in just a second. Let me just make it by itself so that it makes sense. On the fetal pig, here's the heart. 
And there's my left ventricle again. And there's the aortic semilunar valve. We're going up. Now there's only two vessels coming off of the aortic arch as opposed to three. This is the pig. This one's going to go directly to the left limb, the left upper limb, what we would say is our left hand, our left uh, forefoot. This is a BCT. This is a trunk. And this one's going to split. It's actually going to take care of both carotids and the right arm. So let's look at that on a drawing. We're just going to remember the human heart has three. The field pig has two. Okay, so here's the drawing. A little bit better with colors added so you can tell the difference. Let's walk through it again. All right, we're going to start at our diaphragm, of course. That is our cue that tells us where are we supposed to think of what, what, what vessels do we need to re recall here. So we're at the diaphragm, so we're using vessels anterior to the diaphragm, all right, when you're, when you're learning this. Here's the heart. Here's our right and left atria. And here's our right ventricle. Now here's our left ventricle. We're talking about oxygenated blood. So here's where we're coming from. We're gonna go up the ascending aorta. There's the arch, the aortic arch. And then most of the blood's gonna continue on down the descending or thoracic aorta, uh, go through the diaphragm and also be distributed out to the body wall. All right, so let's go up that ascending and go to the arch. Now we said there's only two vessels that emerge from the aortic arch in fetal pigs. Here's one and here's one. This first one that is closer to the left arm, remember this is the left side, is going to go directly to that left uh, forelimb, that front forelimb on the fetal pig. Just like the veins, the first branch is going to run as a subclavian. It's going to run underneath the clavicle. So subclavian, this is the subclavian artery the left subclavian artery. You may call this branch the left subclavian artery. On a fetal pig picture, when you can only see during your identification test, during your, uh, your ID test, you'll only see two branches coming off. And just call this branch the left subclavian even though later you can divide it into the parts on the arm. This first branch is called the left subclavian. And then later it'll be uh, axillary and brachial. But left subclavian and brachiocephalic trunk are your two branches when you're looking at the fetal pig dissection. So now let's continue. So we said this is the left subclavian. We're still uh, we're still medial to the ribs. So we haven't emerged out of the chest wall yet. So let's do that. Let's go past the ribs. We pop out of the ribs. And now we're in the armpit area. We're in the axillary region. And then we're getting ready to be in the arm tissue itself, in the, in the muscle. And so now we're brachial. So we went under the scapula, I mean, I'm sorry, under the clavicle, into the armpit, and now we're on the arm. So we've got left subclavian, that's the branch, and then the axillary artery, the brachial artery. Again, the brachial artery is the artery that you occlude uh, when you take blood pressure, so that should look familiar. Let's do the other uh, vessel that emerges from the aortic arch on a pig, the brachiocephalic trunk, it's written here. The brachiocephalic trunk will branch into three, one, two, three. It will branch into the left carotid, so this will take care of both sides of the neck, uh, both sides of the brain. The left carotid artery, and this is the left common carotid. Since it says carotid on your list, that's fine. The true term is common carotid. Okay, so the left and right common carotids come off of the brachiocephalic trunk and take care of that uh, part of the brain. And then 
we've got to do the right arm because we did the left arm with this left subclavian. So the right subclavian emerges from the brachiocephalic trunk as the third branch, and it looks just like this one. It's got a, a subclavian portion, then we go through the ribs, and then we have an axillary portion, and then we have the right brachial artery. So the difference between this and the veins is the hemiozygos was by itself, but then the veins were a mirror image of themselves on either side with the two brachiocephalic trunks. Do you recall that? So there's that hemiozygos. Here's the brachiocephalic trunks, and then this side looks just like this side. That's not the case with the arteries. With the arteries, we've got one left subclavian that turns into the axillary and brachial, and then we have a brachiocephalic trunk that contains the left carotid and the right carotid and the right subclavian, which turns into the rest of the arm, okay? So we need that trunk to even get to the left carotid. Humans would have one, two, and then that brachiocephalic trunk would cover these two. And that's why you'd have three exits on the aortic arch. All right, all right.